Hey everybody, so excited to be with you all again tonight. It's Cameron Bracey and we are about to get it on tonight. I have another powerful word for each and every person tuning into this video. Um, I know it's been about a week, a week and a half since I've uh, shared another video. Good news is that um, my baby boy, my wife and I's son, Solomon Eli Bracey has uh, made it into the world. He was born on Tuesday, October 26th at 1.19 p.m. Um, he is a bundle of joy. He really touches my heart. Um, I'm just a new man just since he's been born, just different altogether. Just my heart just really has uh, shifted in a positive manner. And I am just uh, filled with joy. Just can't explain even the, the love that's come out of me, the love that is um, that I'm capable of showing, you know, it's, it's just sides of me that I've never seen before. And, um, I'm definitely blessed, you know, um, having a child is definitely a blessing. Um, and the Bible talks about that. Uh, so it's a great gift from the Lord and I just love him so much. And, um, uh, yeah, he will be in one of these, uh, future videos sooner or later. He's taking a nap right now, but, uh, today, tonight, uh, we're going to talk about a word that God placed on my heart last week. Um, it's a word that I've been eager to share with you all, but like I said, little man came into the world and I've been, uh, busy just being a brand new dad and just doing the absolute most, the absolute best that I can for little man. So before we get into this word, uh, as always, we're going to pray. And uh, so if you just want to bow your head and close your eyes, Heavenly Father, we thank you for just allowing each and every one of us to gather tonight, O oh Lord. I ask that you bless the person on the other side of the camera and that you bless me, O oh Heavenly Father. Thank you for allowing us to commune together. Lord, use me as your messenger. Speak through me and speak through me in a manner that it reaches the person who is tuning into this video right now, Heavenly Father. We love you and praise you, O oh Lord. Let your Holy Spirit fill the room. Let your Holy Spirit shift every room. Let your Holy Spirit shift the atmosphere wherever the person who is watching this video right now is, O oh Lord. In your mighty and holy name, Jesus. Amen and amen. So the scripture that I have for you all tonight is Exodus 6. Exodus chapter 6, verse 9. Again, that is Exodus chapter 6, verse 9. And it says, So Moses told the people of Israel what the Lord had said, but they refused to listen anymore. They had become too discouraged by the brutality of their slavery. The title of this message tonight is, I don't want to hear it anymore. I don't want to hear it anymore. Have you ever been in a place in life, maybe in a relationship, maybe on a job, maybe in a church, and you feel like the same thing has been said over and over and over and over again? You see no change. You see no results. You don't see the prosperity that's, that's spoken of. You you don't, you don't see the love from your partner that, that they constantly are expressing through their mouths. and or, or maybe you just don't see promises being fulfilled on the job that should have been fulfilled five or ten years ago. And now you're at a place where you're saying, I don't want to hear it anymore. I'm hurt. I believed before. I've trusted before. I've loved before. And I've been told one thing after the other. And it just seems that I can't trust anyone. It just seems that as I continue to seek one thing after another, one person after another, it just never works out. I simply don't want to hear it anymore. That's where the Israelites were at this place and this, at this point in time right now. See, Moses came to them and told them what God had told Moses. And God had told Moses, I'm going to free my people. I'm going to take them to a promised land. I have a place for them, a place that I've, that I've created for them, a place that's going, to, that, that's going to be so much better than Egypt, a place where they won't be enslaved, a place where they won't work from sundown to, or sun up to sundown, a place where they won't be beaten anymore, a place where they just won't be brutalized anymore. But this passage tell, tells us that the Israelites had become so discouraged by the brutality of their slavery. 
My question for, for you watching this tonight and for anyone else who is tuning in with you, what are you enslaved by? Are you enslaved by unforgiveness? Are you enslaved by lust? Maybe by greed? Maybe by anger? What are you enslaved to? What has imprisoned you that is causing you to no longer believe, to no longer want to listen, to no longer want to open up your heart to the word of God? See, Moses was only being obedient in this passage. He came to the people telling them, God is going to free you from your slavery. God is going to deliver you to your promised land. You will no longer be slaves to the Egyptians. You will no longer be beaten anymore. You will no longer uh, be relying on the Egyptians for, for silver, gold, or for these things that you're working for from sun up to sun down. God wants to free you. And because the, the Israelites had been in slavery for so long, for so long, they said, I don't want to hear it anymore, Moses. Moses, be quiet. You've done enough talking. See, before this chapter, Moses had went to Pharaoh. And he made Pharaoh so mad that Pharaoh actually doubled, maybe even tripled the workload of the Israelites. And as a result, Moses came to God and said, Lord, I did what you told me to do, and it only made things worse. Have you ever done that before? Has God ever told you to do something? And you're so positive at the beginning. You're, you're so strong and bold. And when you do it, you're just being obedient. When, when you're obedient, Things don't turn out the way that you necessarily anticipated. And that's okay. But it shouldn't be a reason where you say, I don't want to listen to God anymore. I don't want to hear his word anymore. I don't want to hear his promises because, see, when I'm obedient, it never works out the way that I thought it should. Tonight... I want to simply encourage you to open up your ears, open up your heart. God is speaking to you. God is trying to tell you something, but maybe you've been hurt. Maybe you've been betrayed. Maybe someone has said something a long time ago that they never followed through on. Maybe you've heard many promises that have been broken. But we serve a God who does not break his promises. We serve a God whose, whose love is never ending. And when he tells you to do something, it's for a purpose. It's for your future. It's to give you a hope. But we go through things in this life. We put our faith in man. We put our trust in man. And when man betrays us, when man disappoints us, when man lets us down, not only do we turn our backs on man, but we turn our backs on God. See, that's where the problem is. A lot of people have stopped listening to the word of God. A lot of people have stopped listening for God because they turn their backs on the church. They turn their backs on a pastor who may have said something that offended them a while ago. They turn their backs on, a, on an organization, on a job, on a facility that may have betrayed them a while ago. And as a result, they turn their backs on God and it's those same people who say, I don't, I don't put my job, I don't put my pastor, I don't do this, I don't, put, I don't put anything above God. But yet we see through their actions that they brought God to the same level or even man to the same level as God. Because when they turn their backs on man who actually hurt them, they blame God. See, that's what Satan wants us to do. When something goes wrong in our life, when something doesn't go, go the way that we necessarily planned it to go, when, when we hear something, when we do something that, we, that we're expecting great results and it doesn't turn out the way that we planned or even the way that we expect it, we blame God. We say, Lord, I was being obedient. Lord, you told me to start this YouTube channel and I'm not seeing thousands of views. Lord, you told me to plant this ministry in the ground. You told me to plant these seeds, but yet no one sees me. No one is hearing me. 
So what do I do? And God says, keep listening and keep doing what I tell you to do. See, Moses in Exodus here, he and God had a lot of dialogue. When you read, Ex when you read Exodus, you see that uh, there was a lot of dialogue between Moses and God. And, and, and when God first called Moses, he didn't even care about the things that may disqualify Moses because God had already qualified him. See, when God said, Moses, I need you to go speak to, to Pharaoh, Moses said, well, Lord, I'm not a great speaker. Um, I, I'm not really good at articulating words. I'm not the, I'm not the greatest communicator. And, and, and God basically said, I don't care. I called you. I chose you. I need you to go and speak to Pharaoh. Moses went back and said, Lord, trust me when I tell you, I'm really not that great. I don't think I'm going to persuade Pharaoh that much because my communication isn't the best. And God said, fine, I'll give you Aaron. And everything that I tell you have Aaron say. But it got to the point when Moses kept just coming back and forth with God. God was like, Moses, just do what I said. Just do what I said. Moses was obedient in doing what God said, and the Israelites had heard the same thing time after time after time after time again. And they just got to the place where they were so discouraged. Not only were their backs torn, but their faith was torn. Not only were they starving for just even a 10 minute lunch break. Remember, this is in a time where there were no unions. Like I said, they were working from sun up to sundown, hungry or not, you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna build the bricks, you're gonna go gather the straw, you're gonna pour the sand, I don't care how hungry you are. This was in a time where they were worked and worked and worked to the point of death. And for so long, they have been waiting for their God to free them. Over 400 years, they have been waiting for God to free them. And somewhere along the way, they stopped trusting in God. They lost hope. They lost faith. They say, you know what? Maybe this is just where we're meant to be. Maybe this is where, what we're called to do for the rest of our lives. We don't know why God would, would do this to us. We serve him. We worship him. We relied on him. Why would he bring us to this place? So now that there's a voice whom God is speaking through, they can't even hear God in it. God was speaking through Moses, but the Israelites were so discouraged so hurt, so heartbroken that they couldn't hear God. They got to the place where they said, I don't want to hear it anymore. I don't want to hear it. Maybe you're a mother, a wife, a daughter, and you've been trying to have a child for so many years. Just time after time, you and your husband have been trying to have kids for so many years. And the doctors is constantly tell you, we can do this, we can do that. Hey, it's all going to work out. Maybe your friends are encouraging you. They're saying, hey, it's all going to work out. You all are, are going to have that child that you've been that you've been trying for. It's going to come. Just, just keep trying. Keep up the faith. Maybe your pastor is saying, just keep up the faith. This is only a trial. This is only temporary. But there's a battle that you and your husband have been facing for two years. For two years. It seems like it's never ending. And you're at the place where when someone speaks life into a situation that seems dead, you say, I don't want to hear it no more. I don't want to hear it. And what's happening is God is saying, I'm trying to speak to you. 
I'm trying to tell you that what you went through was only a test, was only a trial, was only temporary. And you lost faith. And all I want you to do is open up your ears, open up your heart, listen to me and believe what I say. And you know what God does? Sometimes he sends people like in this case, he spoke to Moses. He called Moses. He sent Moses. So maybe God is trying to send a Moses in your life. And they're trying to tell you it's going to be OK. It's going to work out. You and your husband are going to have that baby that you all have been trying for for years now. And you may be at a place where you go, I don't want to hear it anymore. We don't know what to do. Maybe you're the husband watching this. You see your wife crying on the side of the bed. You're praying, you're going to God, Lord, what else is there to do? We've done everything that we can. We fasted, we prayed, we've been obedient. What else is there to do? And God is saying, I want you to listen to me. Be still. See, my wife and I were just talking about this not too long ago. It's in those moments when you've done everything that you possibly can. Yeah, Alexa just died. Uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> um, but it's in those moments where you've done everything that you possibly can. When God says... Now it's your turn to be still, and it's my turn to do my part. It's my turn. But for me to do my part, I need you to be still, and I just need you to continue to listen. Keep an open ear. Maybe you're someone who's been applying for job after job after job. And here goes a testimony for me. When I, I graduated college, in um, 2021, or I'm sorry, 2020. And I remember my senior year, I started applying for jobs, uh, maybe June of 2020, um, July 2020. And I would apply and apply and apply and apply. And just one interview after the next, I was always told how great of a candidate I am, how great my interview went, how great my personality was, how wise I was, how, how professional I was, how, how well I presented myself. And I would get that email and it would say, sorry, we have decided to move forward with other candidates. You know, you get that once or twice, happens. You know, you're like, okay, no big deal. I'll just try for the next one. But man, when it happens, not once, not twice, but the third time, the fourth time, the fifth time, my wife would tell you, I think I went through maybe 10 interviews, 10 interviews before God, before God allowed that one door to open. I went through about 10 of them. Everybody saying the same thing. And I remember it was probably interview number five or six where my faith started to just get a little dim. And every time somebody would say, you are so professional, you, 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 are, you have wisdom beyond your ears, you're this, you're that, I would go, I don't want to hear it anymore. I don't want to hear any of that. Don't tell me that. Don't say that. All I want to hear is that you want to offer me the job. That's all I want to hear. Nothing else. And I got to the place where I had become so discouraged that every time somebody said, it's gonna happen, the door's gonna open, it's all gonna work out, I would go, okay. You're not the one interviewing. You're not the one being told this. You're not the one being told that. This employer would say that they're gonna call me back within 48 hours. Now we're on day three, day four, still haven't heard anything. I have to call to follow up just for that person to tell me, sorry, we decided to move on with other candidates. We apologize if we didn't get back to you. I don't want to hear it anymore. Hang up the phone. And for some of you, that's where you are with God today. 
You've been so obedient. You've pressed so much. You've done A, B, C, and D. You've done all things in order for God. And it seems like nothing has worked out the way that you expected it. And now you're at a place where you say, I don't want to hear it anymore. I'm closing my ears. I don't want to hear it. Take your hands off your ears. Remove any unforgiveness. Forgive those who you may be mad at. Forgive those who you may be bitter at. Let go of the anger. Open up your heart. Open up your mind. And listen to God. Listen for God again. God is speaking to you. God is speaking to you right now and you don't even know it. Whether it's through me, whether it's through a coworker, whether it's through a parent or an in-law, a sibling, a cousin, whoever it may be, God is using someone in your life to speak life into a situation that may be dead. But what he's promised can't come forth until you, one, listen for him, and two, you start to believe again. So I want to encourage everyone who tuned in to this video tonight, listen for God. Listen for him. I don't care how discouraged you've become. I don't care who's betrayed you. I don't care who has lied to you. Trust in God. I know we live in a society today where a lot of people are big on relationships. And... We are in a time where we, we press, we push for marriage. My wife and I push for marriage, but many just don't want to commit. And the reasons we hear a lot that a lot of individuals don't want to commit is because of the betrayal that they faced in the past, because of the mistrust they have, because of the lack of trust they may have, because of someone who cheated on them in the past, whatever it may be. They've stopped listening. They stopped believing that God has a husband or a wife for them. So every person that comes along now that tells them this, that tells them that they go, oh, God, I've heard it before. I don't want to hear it again. I don't want to hear it anymore. And little do they know, it might even be you who I'm speaking to on the other side of this camera. Little do you know, God may be speaking to you. That may be the one. But you have so much pride, so much unforgiveness, so much anger that you've covered up your ears. And you said, I don't want to listen anymore. I don't want to hear it anymore. Open up your ears. Open up your heart. I pray that this message has blessed you, that it's reached you. Um... I'm always honored and blessed to just be able to give a, a, a word that God has given me. And uh, it's not easy, but it definitely is a joy. It definitely is an honor to just serve each and every one of you in this manner. If this message didn't reach you, I bet you you came across it because you know someone who it's for. You know someone who's in a season of, I don't want to hear it anymore. Don't tell me anything positive. Don't tell me anything uplifting because everything in my life has been a living hell. I don't want to hear anything positive anymore. Send this video to them. Hit that share button. Type in their name, their number, and send it to them. Because I want everyone to know that God still speaks his promises are true. His promises are never broken. And while we may go through a season where it seems silent, where it seems everything is sort of uh, repetitive, where it seems we're being obedient and it works, it doesn't necessarily work out the way that we thought, don't close off your ears. Don't close off your heart. Continue to trust God. I love you. I look forward to uh, joining you all again, to speaking with you all again. And uh, again, if you have any videos, any topics that you may want me to 
uh, talk about, anything that you may want me to address, comment below. Drop the comments below. Send me an email at camerabracingministries at gmail.com. And I would be love to uh, go to God about what it is that may be on your heart that you may want me to speak about. So again, I love you all. God bless you. Have a blessed and favorite filled week. Love you all.